Right then, people, we're back inside the building. How are we doing this morning? Just gone five minutes past nine here on Trickstar Radio, and we have a very special guest joining us this morning. Man like ruins and gold. How are you doing, sir? I'm very well. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. It's very good to get you inside the building. And uh, I feel this is one that's been kind of uh, on, on, the, on the cards for a while. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I, yeah, I mean, since I've started making up new music, it's nice to come on and actually show it off for the first time in a while. Definitely, man. I think I think the I think I think with your sound, especially the way you've kind of changed it up over the years, and you've always been someone whose sound moves quite fluidly. You know, you, you've never been someone that kind of sticks on one thing. You've always been someone whose sound does kind of dart around. So obviously, we get a lot of different guests on this show, and we get a lot of different guests from a lot of different sounds and genres as well. Um, so what I like to do to kind of open things up more than anything else is ask you, um, who is Ruins and Gold? Uh, Ruins and Gold basically was born out of just me wanting to have a fresh start obviously i started off said who a while ago now uh it still feels quite new to be fair yeah uh and that started off with sort of darker base stuff um and yeah i mean ruins and gold is more a chilled side of my sound and probably more realistic side of what i like now Interesting, man. So, obviously, before that, you were working in a much more sort of dance music centric kind of zone. Um, before that, sort of switch into, I want to say, a more sort of organic, sort of acoustic sounding um, approach to production. Um, what What do you think it was that really, more than anything else, inspired that major kind of leap um, from the more digital <laughs> side of things to the more sort of um, I'm trying I'm trying to think more sort of real life kind of sound. It's it's basically I've basically been a musician for longer than I've been a producer. So for me, it was doing all of the dancey bass stuff was really fun and I loved it especially when I was living in Bristol and doing shows and stuff but I feel like the ruins and gold the more uh real instrument stuff is more me and it's nice to be able to mix it all together and get a blend of everything nice man that's good to hear and I I think obviously the more (laughs) your sound grows the more sort of elements are kind of taken into it and you've always been someone that's kind of uh it's kind of darted around I like to say because obviously you did go on quite like an extended period of travel um a couple of years ago um and obviously during that time you were kind of writing an album um which was I believe Saigon and and like obviously with that like how did you find producing on the road more than anything else because that to me is an absolute nightmare yeah. the, the idea of like having to take a laptop out and it getting sand in it or getting like yeah. like stuff like that that's that's like crazy to me yeah no it was to be fair I, a lot of the time i produce with headphones anyway so that side of things wasn't too bad it was the having a laptop on an island in the middle of nowhere or staying in like a hut where they didn't have electricity for like most of the day. That's honestly my worst yeah. nightmare. Like the <laughs> just, idea of waking up and yeah. your phone like dying overnight and going, oh okay, I have no idea where yeah. I'm gonna what I'm gonna yeah, do now. No. Like um obviously a lot of people tend to find that travelling sort of experience opens their their minds up, it opens them up as people as well. Like did you find a similar thing musically? Uh some places, <laughs> then other places not. I mean, yeah, there was places where we I'd wake up and be like, this is amazing. But then obviously you kind of don't want to be stuck in your room all day making tunes when you're on an island that's like the most beautiful thing. So, yeah, I think definitely overall it kind of inspired me a lot, especially when I managed to sit down and actually produce. It was it was a lot easier than, say, if I'd just been stuck in my room at home. Yeah, definitely, man. So, 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 obviously, with that, then the sounds developed over the years. You've kind of grown as a producer and as a person as well, like as, as we all do through through our twenties. I feel, and mm. um, you've now kind of switched things around into this um, new alias, following on from the launch of that album. And you've done a couple of bits in between, but now it's very much focusing on the new alias, which is, of course, uh, Ruins in Gold. Uh, first of all, where'd you get the name? Uh, it, it basically stems from some lyrics I like from a band called La Dispute. And coming up with names is just the hardest thing ever anyway. So I just thought of everything I could and that seemed to ring a bell and I thought, I'm just going to have to go with it and nice. see how it goes. There we go. I, I, I mean, it's an interesting one because obviously all of the names you've kind of had, um, <laughs> apart from your, your actual name, which was <laughs> your production name for a period of time, um, they are all quite unique sort of interesting names. They're not names that you're going to kind of find five or six artists with the same name. Yeah. Um, like, kind, kind of with that then, do you, do you think that's, that's an important thing, obviously having an individual kind of name and brand? Yeah, I mean, it definitely came into it when I was looking at, stuff i mean all i could find for ruins and gold was when i googled it it was like a cheat to pokemon on game boy and i love pokemon on game boy so I, was like, 
<laughs> it's double bubble. Yeah, it's win win. Like, that's absolutely fine. So yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So obviously moving forward, then you have now kind of really kind of kicked off this new alias. You've been working on it. You've had a uh, couple of couple of bits floating around, and obviously you've been working a lot with um, the Annecy side of things as well. How long has Annecy been kind of running as a project in general? Because I know it's, it's kind of kicked off a lot more recently, yeah. but it's it's been in the works and sort of it, in and around what you're doing for for quite a yeah, while. Yeah, I mean Annecy started when I was in last year of uni, so that's three years ago now and it started after i traveled around europe and visited lake annecy in annecy in the french alps and my mate me and my mate came back and my mate was like oh i'd love to like start a project called annecy and i was like i think i'm gonna steal that and start a record <laughs> just like that <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't even matter. Yeah, I'm just gonna steal the yeah. name. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, like, kind of with that, obviously, there's there's a very kind of specific sort of sound and, and idea. I feel behind that Annecy kind yeah. of kind of brand and what it's kind of grown into. Because I feel to begin with, it was a lot more kind of focused a lot more on on what you were doing as a producer. And mm. now it's definitely extended out. We've seen a couple of different artists getting involved. Like, um, like who have you got involved so far? Oh God. So we've got. Sabrina, obviously, when I came in, you were playing her latest single, We Got Lost, which we just that was, released. That was definitely on purpose, by the way. Yeah. The, the timing was so, oh, he's going to get her at quarter two. I need to make sure that's playing at that yeah. point. And then we had Rainy Dancer as well recently, and we've got some more stuff coming up with Rainy Dancer, which is sounding so, so sick. Um, we've got some stuff from myself, and we've got a few other artists as well that we are confirming literally as we speak there we go I mean the the whole kind of process of it looks really enjoyable and obviously I float around in a lot of the group chats so I see sort of things happening from yeah. afar uh, and it's, it is really exciting to kind of see just how uh, kind of um, utilised it's becoming as a platform like it's it's definitely not that sort of solo sort of um, thing of this is my platform and I'm going to release my stuff on it now it's very much we're going to get people involved we're going to try different things we're going to yeah. really explore electronic music more than anything else yeah. that definitely seems to be the vibe it's on um, so 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 kind of looking to the future with Annecy then like is that is that definitely is that still the path you're very much keen on exploring just looking at as much electronic music as possible yeah 100 percent. i think when i first started Annecy, like you said it was used as a platform for me to just push my own stuff but as i've got older and it feels like i've got more time to kind of focus on other artists and push other artists and actually push that sound as a whole rather than just myself which is really exciting to be fair Awesome. And well, what we're going to do is we're going to crack on and we're going to get into some music as we move forward. Now, over the years, um, you've worked with Danny Jack a fair bit. Yep. Um, you've put together a fair few tunes. You've been involved on a couple of different um, collaborations and remixes and, and, and kind of everything in, in thrown into one sort of yep. situation. And obviously, um, it's been really interesting to see that journey. This next tune we've got, it goes by the name of Truth. So talk to me about the process of putting this one together. Uh, this one, I had written most of my side of stuff and I yeah I had Danny Jack on my last album I knew I wanted him on a track because he's just probably one of my favorite vocalists to work with just because he fits my sound so well uh I sent it over to him he recorded his side of things I got it back and realized that what I'd done just wasn't good enough for what he'd done so I basically remade the whole of my he's gonna love that you said that yeah (laughs) (laughs) and uh yeah that's basically how it was born now it's probably one of my favorite tracks I've made in a while I would say interesting so like what what is it about Danny's sort of style specifically that always kind of that kind of works so much for yourself I don't know it's it his his lyrics I, I kind of find that his lyrics are perfect for what I write in terms of like they're quite melancholic and quite I don't know and yeah just his voice in general it just seems to match my style of stuff so well interesting I mean obviously I've got quite a good relationship with Danny I've had him on the show a couple of times and we've been um, we've done a lot of conversations together and obviously we've played a lot together as well yeah. and obviously whenever I'm the situations I tend to be in with him tend to be a lot more sort of hype and yeah, in yeah, dance yeah. situations because he's an amazing host when he, when he went, like getting a crowd going and things like that so yeah. for me hearing him do uh, the more poetic side of things the more yeah. as you say melancholic sort of um, approach to lyricism it is always interesting to hear and it's always interesting to kind of see the kind of spectrum of stuff that he can do it's yeah, always exciting he's to definitely me. dynamic Definitely. Um, well, it's just gone quarter past nine here. We are live on Trickstar Radio. Just before we get into uh, this track, uh, what is the best social media tag for people to get hold of you on? Uh, 
at Ruins and Gold on everything. It's obviously so unique. So yeah, at Ruins and Gold. Amazing, man. Well, that just makes life so much easier. Yeah, it makes exactly. me very happy to hear as well. <laughs> just one thing, like everything. Yeah. Oh, why can't everyone do that? <laughs> um, so we're going to get to this one now. This one goes by the name of Truth. We are live inside the building at Cub K X V U as well at Trickstar B T N. We're in the building till ten. This is the interview hour with man like Ruins in Gold. Make sure you're sticking around and don't go anywhere. <laughs> with Cobb Colvin. Trickstar Radio.